So welcome to uh, part two of uh, your emotional intelligence course uh, with Spirit of EQ. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be examining, looking at uh, the connection between emotional intelligence and success. And one of the things that I will uh, throw out to you before I take care of some housekeeping is to let you know, and it's a good thing for you to keep in mind is that success is defined by you. Um, that might be a job and a career and money. It also could be family or could be community, could be charity. Uh, you have to define that. So when we talk about tonight, we're, you're gonna hear that term success, success over and over. Just remember uh, that we're not pigeonholing anyone into a certain definition. It, it's, it's up to the individual and what you value most. So uh, with that, I'm going to touch with you a little bit about some housekeeping. Uh, would ask uh, if you could keep yourself muted if you're not uh, volunteering to speak. Uh, it keeps uh, the distractions and the background noise down. Uh, also, and certainly one of the most important things, as I'll repeat from last night, is that we do value psychological safety. And that endeavor or that pursuit for us is that we want to create an environment where you feel comfortable sharing or maybe not sharing. Uh, you should never feel compelled to, to go either way. Uh, we hope you'll be interactive. We hope you'll have some things to, to offer uh, for your fellow classmates and uh, such. Um, but again, uh, we want this to be uh, an environment where you feel comfortable. Um, the other thing that I wanna do is to touch a little bit about last night. Um, again, you'll have a, a, a video copy of this coming up by end of week. Uh, as well as last night's class, but last night we, we took a look at unlocking EQ, kind of took the basics of it uh, and looked at some of the definitions around emotional intelligence so that we have a better handle on what it is uh, and quite frankly, to some degree, what it is not. Uh, and then to be able to look at it as how can we leverage it? Uh, remembering that emotions are chemicals in your brain and they are communicators, um, a term neurotransmitter is a good one for that. It's trying to help you. They are your allies, they are not your enemies. The other thing that we looked at was getting a handle around competencies that are housed inside of our model uh, that can help you as you are pursuing uh, life in general, as well as just the daily walk of life that you may have. And those things, again, are there as your ally to help you navigate. Tonight is kind of a continuation of that. Because Eric, can I make one more yeah. point from last night? Oh, sure, sure. Unlike your IQ, which is pretty much set, you know, you, you're as smart as you are. You can learn new facts or new processes and things, but you really can't improve your IQ very much. Emotional intelligence is very learnable, and it's also not static. Your EQ will vary on where you are at. If you're in a really good place in your life, your EQ scores would be higher. If you're lower, they would be lower. And uh, by working on them, you can increase those. So just remember that it's a learnable skill. That's a great point, Jeff. Thanks for bringing that in. And, and what I'd like you guys to remember also is that as it is like with exercise and our muscles, right? You've probably heard the term atrophy. Uh, and typically atrophy happens when you're not exercising the muscle, so it, such as it is also with emotional intelligence. Um, what we want to do is be as well and as strong as possible so that when we encounter circumstances that are either A, not to our liking, or maybe even more importantly, out of our control, um, we can still be effective and strong. Uh, that's very, very important. Uh, because if no other year has shown it, 2020 has definitely shown a lot of stuff is out of our control. And it still is. Um, it's just, it's much more inspiring and much more healthy uh, if we can learn while those things are going on and, and be in a position where we're growing. So, but once again, Jeff, thanks for bringing that up. So if you're ready, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started tonight. So once again, uh, tonight's class session is going to be on emotional intelligence and success. And 
what I'm going to do to start with you guys, uh, we realized that we're just taking the first steps toward understanding emotional intelligence and its connections. Um, if you wouldn't mind, and Jeff, if you can monitor the chat, if you could type in the chat, uh, what do you think the answer is there? And again, I realize you may not necessarily have the answer, but you had to think about what you know so far. What do you think the connection, what's the relationship between emotional intelligence and success? And Jeff, as you get those, just feel free to go ahead and start rattling off and All right. Aaron. Your mindset. Okay. Cooperation. Okay. Okay, they're they're equal or the same. Hmm. Positive correlation, high emotional intelligence equals high success, uh, internal motivation, high EQ equals a high personal success. Hmm. That's awesome. Love mm -hmm. it. Other leaders will respect and trust employees with temperance and good emotional balance. I like that temperance. Hmm. Uh, one is a tool that can help reach the other. Oh, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Stepping stone to success. Okay. All right. We need to write, we need to look back at these. These could be some good podcast episodes. Hey, there you go. There you go. All right. So let's think about that. Uh, I'm going to have you guys watch a brief video. And uh, as you might be able to recognize, uh, that's Jim Carrey. And this is a little different. It's only, uh, it's very brief, but what I'd like you to do, and we can uh, go unmuted afterwards or type in the chat. I want you to look at this video and tell me what is it that you see that maybe is not so obvious to what you're looking at as it relates to success and emotional intelligence. I might also ask you to think back to last night when we were going over those competencies and the importance of those. So let's take a look at this and uh, then we'll come back together and talk a little bit about it. From the upcoming film, True Crimes, please welcome two time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey. Thank you. I am two time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey. You know, when I go to sleep at night, I'm not just a guy going to sleep. I'm two-time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey, going to get some well-needed shut-eye. And when I dream, I don't just dream any old dream. No, sir. I dream about being three-time Golden Globe winning actor Jim Carrey. because then I would be enough. <laughs> it would finally be true. And I could stop this, this terrible search. <laughs> For what I know ultimately won't fulfill me. But these are important, these awards. I don't want you to think that just because if you blew up our solar system alone, you wouldn't be able to find us or any of human history with the naked eye. But from our perspective, this is huge. <laughs> One more time, here are the nominees for best motion picture comedy. The Big Short. All right. I'm going to come out and, uh, sorry there. 
Um, so when you look at uh, that particular clip, um, very brief, but it spoke a lot. So what were some of your thoughts about what you saw about success? And feel free if you want to unmute yourself or if you want to type in the chat. And uh, once again, Jeff, if you can keep your eye on the chat. It is never enough, always more to achieve. Mm. Success is never ending. Success is relative to the goal you set. Mm. Dreamer envisioned success first. Success is what you make it. Even though he has great success in our eyes, it goes to show that not even he is comfortable and wants more. Okay, stop that, there, Jeff. Okay. That's a really good one because I, I, I was hoping you guys might pick up some of that. Do you, did you see uh, a guy that was like on top of the world? I, I've got it all. This is awesome. Or did you see something else? And maybe go back to that last comment you read, Jeff. It goes to show that not even he is comfortable and wants more. Okay, and, um, and I'm just gonna go off script a little bit. Uh, whoever wrote that, do you feel comfortable unmuting and maybe unwrapping that a little bit? If you don't, that's cool. But if you do, man, I, that'd be great. You're muted, Rick. Try right, this, how's that? Okay. Cool, cool. You got me now? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I just this way he goes through. First, he starts off with being arrogant, so it kind of says that he's kind of uncomfortable in his own skin to begin with. Always wanting more. Mm. Then he keeps, you know, reiterating that, trying to tell himself, keeps repeating to himself, like, "Hey, I should get more. I should have more. I'm not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough." You know, the repetitiveness is like he's talking to himself, you know, interpersonally. Yeah. And he finally says, "If I have the third, then yeah, I got it. But do I?" Yeah. Maybe I need more. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's kind of what I saw. Oh, and that's great, Rick. Thank you for those observations. And thank you, everybody else, and what you've typed. And Jeff, I know we may have more. I, I really wanted that to come out uh, because that's what struck me about it when I first saw that clip. And that I saw that clip a few years ago is that here's someone that's achieved a lot, but it's very clear it's not enough. And, and he's on this search, but he knows that maybe the search is a little in vain. And again, I may be reading a little too much into it. If Jim Carrey were on our call, he might say, no, 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 it's not that at all. But I bring that in because success is also found, right, by us defining it, not other people defining it for us, right? Would you guys agree with that? Yep. Yes. 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 Because I don't know if you guys are like me. I've had times in my life where I pursued a lot that everybody told me I should pursue. And then when I caught it, I was totally bored out of my gourd. Mm -hmm. I was, I was totally, wait a minute. Why doesn't this feel as great as they told me it was going to feel, you know, mm -hmm. now, Here's the thing. Um, all of us have an opportunity. You remember last night when we were talking with Jeff about his noble goal? That's one of the tools of emotional intelligence that you can use to kind of maybe center yourself toward those things that are going to really be consistent with who you are and how you've defined it. Right? Now, this is just one facet around the idea of success, but it's a big one. Because Jeff and I share this in any of our sessions, we want people to be well as they become more successful. Because my gut tells me you guys have met a lot of people who seemingly on the outside have it all, but they're miserable. Maybe if we had a little less and we were following our path, they could live in harmony. 
So Jeff, are there any others you want to point out from the chat? Let's before see. We After three, he would have dreamt of four because he wasn't successful as others. The grass is always greener. It's okay to be proud of your success and desire more. All right. Nice. Nice. All right. Can I, can I share something real quick before we proceed? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of success and wanting to be well at the same time, um, we live in an era where people think that it's just okay to just go on and just seek success, but they don't understand who supposed to be the beneficiary of the success. If you're not the one, who else is going to benefit from that? For me personally, I have tips like I want to make sure I'm sleeping well. And the people who I spend the most time with, I want to make sure I'm enjoying all of my time with them and I'm making sure I'm being very productive because what I have realized over the years is that people who you spend most of the time with, if they're not giving you that positive energy, you tend to gravitate towards negative energy more. So I kind of pick my, the people who I'm spending time with. And sometimes you will not just, you will not realize who people actually are until you, you try to want spend more time with them. And as I'm spending time with them, if things are not going the way I see them, I just make some changes. So that's very important that you pointed that out that success and being well, those should go together. Sometimes, oh, sometimes yeah. people think that, oh, when you're successful, you're supposed to be making money and not be able to enjoy it in a sense. No, it's not supposed to be like that. So I experience it a lot. Oh, I'll be like, no, I think I can have it all. That's so awesome. I'm really happy that you shared that tonight. Yes, you're very welcome, and thank you for that, uh, Jeff. Uh, we we need to carve that out as a as a testament to uh, what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm going to go ahead, guys, and I'm going to pull back up my screen, and we'll continue on here. Um, up uh, next, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and to something that is one of his most favorite things in all the world. And he's going to, <laughs> he's going to explain that uh, okay. right here in a second. So Jeff, take it away. All right. I have loved the Minions since I first saw them. I admit it. I don't care. 63-year-old guy is not supposed to like them. That's what you think. But I, I think they're very funny. But I also think they have a very unique uh, humanity about them that gets missed. Um, and, and what does this have to do with success? I think we've already touched on it tonight, but just how do these guys respond to life? They are in the moment all the time. If you've watched any of the movies, they're right there. Minions rock. Thanks, Rick. Uh, they're right there living what's going on and not having a lot of, of worry about what's going on tomorrow or regret that, you know, what did they blow up yesterday? They don't care. You know, their role technically is they're supposed to be the minion to an evil person, Gru, who that's a whole nother story with him. Uh, but they get sidetracked easily and they, 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 follow what they feel is important for them. Um, you know, they may be on a job and they see a flower. Guess what they do? They stop and smell the flowers, smell the roses or a puppy's plan. They, their success is how they live their life, not necessarily helping Gru take over the world. Uh, but I just think that, uh, they're not basing their success of what the other evil henchmen are doing. They're living where they're at and they're enjoying their life and that's success for them. Uh, I know this is kind of a silly example, but they're motivated intrinsically. We talked about that the other night. What they see and what they get interested in is what they do. Uh, so their, their idea of success is not the same as, you know, other evil henchmen. So I hope that makes sense. 
Um, well, Jeff, I would throw in there too um, that, you know, at some point in time, guys, we're all going uh, to have messages or people that are going to try to tell us about how we should look at the world and how we should define success. I'd love to be able to tell you that after you take our classes, our sessions, you're going to have an impenetrable wall around you so you won't have those messages, but we can't. So tomorrow, next week, you're going to have those messages telling you, but do everything you can. And emotional intelligence is a key tool to define it based on what's going to be right for you. All right. So Jeff, I'll move on to the next slide for you. Okay. Let's take a look at something called success factors. Well, somebody just put up success is self-defined. I was just going to make a comment too that, oh, that the minions are just like uh, sniff and scurry in the book we just read who moved my cheese same same people <laughs> cool cool okay so i think this is my slide in it eric Lee? yeah yeah go ahead okay so we have the competencies that we talked about last night those eight things but if you take the full assessment the, the say that we offer through six seconds uh it it has four success factors that that assessment brings out and and there they are effectiveness well, first, let me go back one step with what this assessment is. It's what you are saying about yourself with this assessment. So defining success is coming from inside of you. So how well do you feel that you're being effective? Are you getting positive results in your work, in your home life? Uh, you know, maybe you're a golfer and you want to be a good golfer. Are you getting the positive results that you want from that? And then relationships, that's, um, it's not the number of friends or people you know, it's having some strong interpersonal connections. And that, that number is up to you. Some people need a lot, some people only have a few, but you have strong in, interpersonal connections. And those are external factors. Those are the things that are on the outside that you do. And then we have some success factors that are internal. Uh, quality of life. Are you really happy with where your life is? Is it, is it a life well lived? And only you can decide that. Uh, I can't tell you if your quality of life is what you want. Um, and then well-being. And uh, I think it was Chanel maybe that, that brought that up. Yeah. Optimal energy and functioning. That's your health, how you're resting, uh, things like that. So are you doing well that way and, and there's questions in the assessment that re, uh, relate these things so one uh, thing i was going to mention too jeff as as uh you guys look at uh these four success factors and as jeff mentioned they are uh part of our uh deep deeper dive uh, assessment we put this in here because uh six seconds had responses uh, as they were going through and putting it together about where does emotional intelligence show up in some very key areas of life. And these were the ones that were born out of that. And most people, when they look at this, they go, yeah, I could see how this would be because of their desire to be effective, like in work, uh, in their preferred professional life, and also in their personal, their relationships which typically runs, if not the top, it's definitely very close to the top of the list for most people as to what they want to be strong and, and uh, effective. Uh, quality of life, you know, how we look at life, how, how we view it, and then well-being, uh, which is one that I really, really appreciate. Um, it, it's, it's that idea that, you know, again, no matter how we define success, we want to be well when we arrive there or when we are pursuing or when we're experiencing it, right? Um, so just a little bit of background and what we're going to be looking at going forward and Jeff's going to talk about is some of the things that are connected to it, uh, specifically to emotional intelligence, which hopefully you guys will find out that there's some really cool um, research that was done about the connection to these four areas and certain competencies in our model. So Jeff, I'll move to the next slide and let you kind of run uh, okay. toward this. So we just want to go over briefly again, a definition of emotional intelligence. So it's being smarter with feelings. So it's being more aware 
the know yourself, the, the K of the KCG, how well do you know yourself, to be more intentional, are you choosing what you want to do? Are you paying attention to those things? And then the why to be more personal and that's in the, the give yourself. So just remember that. And the other thing to remember that we talked about last night is emotions are chemicals that are there to give you information to help you make the decisions. And um, they're there for a purpose and emotions are neutral it's what you do with the emotion determines the outcome. Do you react to something and not think it through or are you able to slow down? We talked about the six seconds last night and get a response. So that's the basic idea of emotional intelligence, being smarter with feelings. So just gonna go through these again so that we're all on the same page again. In the know yourself, we have enhanced emotional literacy. That's being able to recognize emotions and understand what they're telling you. Uh, and that's also not just for you. That's also, are you able to recognize emotions in the people around you so that you can maybe help respond to them better? Recognize patterns. When this happens, do I do that? And if, if this happens and you do that thing and you get a good response, don't worry about that pattern. But if you do that, if this happens and you do that every time and you get a bad, you know, it's a bad situation, then you want to step back and take a look at that and go, okay, I need to change how I'm working with that pattern. That takes time. It's neural pathways and things like that, that, that keep you from making it easy. So those are the two. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt you there. Um, so guys, uh, if, if you're, um, I, and I, what I love about recognized patterns, um, if you guys are uh, into sports, uh, team sports, uh, think of college football or, or professional football or basketball. Most every team that you ever will ever follow, they look at game film. And the reason why they look at game film is to be able to pick up what their opponent does in certain situations, right? It's like getting a market intelligence. They know that that particular quarterback or that point guard, when they face pressure, they typically do X, Y, and Z. Think about how powerful that is for ourselves. If you can know how you respond in situations that are high pressure, you're gonna be in a better position to be able to manage it when that comes. If you know how you respond when you achieve something really big, again, you're gonna be in a better position to make sure you manage that well. So I wanted to throw that game film analogy out to you guys because it's really powerful around that particular competency. But go ahead, Jeff. And one hey, I, thing I got a quick question for, for both you guys. This is okay. Matt uh, Shedlove. So um, have you, do you guys have any tools um, that help to, um, basically build a matrix of, so I, I'm a PM certified PMP, not a big deal, but it, one of the tools that we often use is a stakeholder analysis or stakeholder register. And kind of what you just mentioned is, you know, we're talking about a, a, a playbook, right? Or are you talking about football or basketball and examining and playing game film? A stakeholder register is really something that can help people um, document all the different people that you're involved with, for team members, it could be executives, and that it's kind of like a little playbook. You you determine if they're a negative or a positive influencer, and it, it's. I'm just wondering if you have any tools like that that I think could really help map and understand how people could work with other people in these different elements. If you, we we have a couple of ways to do this. If you would take the full assessment. Uh, we work with what you have, you know, what, what you say about yourself to, let's say maybe recognize patterns is something that maybe you need to improve, but you're really good at consequential thinking. So you can harness the consequential thinking to the recognizing patterns. And the other thing is we actually have some, some tools that we could use with groups that show how groups respond with the individual people added into it. We have a lot of tools like that that we can use. Okay. Yeah. And I would throw out to you as well uh, that uh, in each of our assessments, uh, specifically to the one that measures emotional intelligence, there is a, a, a template that's uh, provided 
that allows you to be able to carve out some of these pathways like you described. Um, but oftentimes, and this is for everyone, uh, oftentimes when we work with organizations, uh, we set a course with them as it relates to a lot of the kind of things that you're mentioning there. Gotcha. And, okay. And that is based on what we see that this organization needs. We just don't have a, a cookie cutter. Yeah. Uh, Matt, you said you were a PMP. What yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a project management professional okay. certification <laughs> through PMI Project Management Institute, okay. and it's okay. uh, and it was pretty. It, it, it took a lot to get that. There's a lot of studying that's involved with it, but uh, yeah. it really helps to understand how to work. I'm just trying to fold in what you guys are walking us through here and how we could use it in the context of things that we do like project management and um, kind of evaluating our stakeholders or even team players, right? Or employees, mm -hmm. right? Helping, helping us balance how, how can we best um, work with those people to, to make sure that we have um, our emotions in check and we're kind of always Keep, keep thinking about the, um, the positive aspects of moving forward and focusing on, on uh, you know, noble goals and trying to avoid conflicts, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we pretty much insist on is if we're working with an organization, those major stakeholders are the first people that we want to work with. Yeah. Uh, we found that it doesn't do any good if we get everybody else emotionally intelligent and now the people in charge are not speaking the same language as the other people are. And yeah. uh, you can cause lots of problems if you don't uh, handle it that way. I think Eric yeah. would. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Matt, and we appreciate that. And, and as well, uh, if at any point in time, if you wanna learn more, and even just for the sake of learning more, you know, reach out to us. We're more than happy to provide what we can to help uh, give, give you understanding. Sure, uh, thank you. For understanding. Um, so Jeff, as we're looking at the choose yourself yeah. competencies, uh, what do we see in there? We see consequential thinking, which pretty much goes by it, itself. You, If I do this, this is what's going to happen. There is consequences for the decisions you make. So being able to think it through. Um, the next one is navigating emotions. I am dealing with this situation. There's strong emotions either in myself or other people. So what am I going to do or how am I going to navigate that? Um, as you as you work through the intrinsic motivation is, am I motivated by external, or am I in, motivated by what's inside of me? Uh, examples of external motiv uh, motivation: uh, pickup truck ads during the football game. There's about 800 of them every football game. They're extrinsically motivating you to buy a pickup truck. Intrinsic motivation is, yeah, my truck's six years old, but it still runs really well, and I don't want payments. So that's that's the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic. So then you get to optimism. Uh, can I see what is coming forward in a positive way? If if I work on this, what is the outcome I'm going to be? Can can this Situation by the way, official development. By the way, on that one, guys, uh, optimism uh, is a very key connector into innovation, and I know that's near and dear to a lot of your hearts. Um, without it, it, innovation really, really suffers. Mm -hmm. And I, I do just want to make one quick thing. Uh, when I'm working with someone, if they take the full assessment, the, the full assessment requires a debrief. We just don't give people the information and, and go from there. If they're really high in, in a certain categories, certain competencies, we have to make sure they're not overusing them. Like with optimism, are you optimistic? Are you just, or are you being a cheerleader? You know, one of the things that always uh, college football game and, and your team is behind, you know, 42 points and there's two minutes left. Why are the cheerleaders still cheering? Nobody thinks they're going to win. So are you doing that? Are you avoiding the, the truth of the matter? Uh, increase empathy. Are you able to put yourself into this, the place that the other person is in? Uh, the difference between sympathy and empathy is sympathy is you're almost in a position of power 
or, or being better than the person, you're feeling sorry for them. Empathy is actually putting yourself in that place. If you want to ex explore empathy a little bit more, there's a woman named Benet Brown that has a really nice two, three minute little animated video that, that shows you empathy. Uh, it, it's, it's really great. Uh, we use it in trainings, uh, B-E-N-E -E Brown and just empathy, you'll find it on YouTube. Uh, but it shows that empathy is you're in the person's place. Uh, you're not trying to fix them, you're there with them. Uh, and also remember to show yourself empathy. Give yourself a break, we're all human. You know, if you make a mistake, yeah, you wanna correct it so that you don't do it again, but don't beat yourself up. You know, we're, we're human, we make mistakes. And then pursue noble goal. What is it that gets you out of bed in the morning so that you can live your life the way you want it to live? Um, we talked about that last night. Everybody's noble goal was different. It's not easy to come to your noble goal. It might take some time, but once you do that, um, you'll find that it's much easier to, to think about these other con uh, competencies because it kind of drives them. And one other thing we didn't talk about last night, we have helped companies, organizations develop their company noble goal, which is not the same as a mission statement that this is what the company is really about, the organization is really about. So went through those pretty quickly. Uh, like I said, if you want more information, you can find our podcast um, and get I'm that. gonna kind of uh, take you guys off of uh, the slide thing for a minute. Give us a little bit of a breather. Uh, we've, uh, we've absorbed a lot of information and review as well. Uh, what questions do you have about maybe what we've looked at so far, whether it's connecting it to success, uh, or even just in general uh, around uh, the competencies. So again, feel free to use the chat if you prefer, or you can unmute yourself and ask questions as well. Is success always achieving an end goal or can it be the pursuit of that goal? Yeah, if, 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 in, in, if in your mind, the effort and the work and that kind of stuff is, is what you feel is successful. You're being successful. Like we said last night, as an example, the noble goal is something you'll never achieve in your lifetime because it's something you're always working at. So to be successful with your noble goal means you'll never reach it, if that makes sense. So I also would say too, Jeff, and especially when you think about uh, your well being, um, for me, uh, with exercise. Um, I, I'm, I'm a committed person that way. Um, and I do it six days a week, not because I'm training to be a triathlete, not because I'm going to be a bodybuilder or that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to finally call me for that spot on the roster. Um, my success is found in the doing of it because I want to be well. I want to be well when I'm older. I want to be, I want to have, uh, I want to have a great life. Um, but that's not measured in an end goal, so to speak, as much as it is just that process, right? Um, and again, that's what I've defined. You may define it differently. Maybe you are wanting to be a triathlete, uh, those kind of things. But for me, it's in that process. In the video that we watched last night with Neil Peart, he, what I got from that video is he was never to be the drummer that he strive to be but his success was for him I believe he was working at it and making the changes not just sitting on his laurels as you know recognized as one of the best drummers of all time yeah, so. yeah. what other questions uh comments uh before we get into the uh, the next section guys feeling good got the energy uh feeling motivated <laughs> sure. All right. All right. I love it. Thank you. Sure. All of us, apparently. <laughs> and I wish uh, I wish I could get some of your same uh, inspiration for working out, man. That's a tough one. I, I just, for whatever reason, I I bike and I try to do things, and I just can't. It's just hard to to get in the routine. Well, and I will tell you this: 
Um, I am a, a recovering corporate guy that did nothing for years. And quite frankly, it was getting kicked out of corporate America that really set me on this path. Um, just a really, really brief story, right? So uh, I was like one of those execs that thought I had the world by the tail. So whether I was in it or out of it, ah, no big deal. And I remember a friend told me, hey, you know, you maybe should take up running. Could help you with stress relief, could, you know, help you get in shape, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, running, no big deal. Yeah, I can handle that. Remember going to buy the shoes, right? Because they told me you got to buy the right shoes, all right? And uh, <laughs> the guy in the store tells me, uh, hey, I, I, I just got to tell you that the first four to six weeks, it's going to be kind of tough. You know, you, you haven't really been exercising. Now, here I am in my head. I'm going, he doesn't know. I got this. No big deal. It's not a, no. Uh. I buy the shoes, go out the next morning. I think I might have run about a quarter or an eighth of a mile, and I thought I was going to have a coronary. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, I was, it's so vivid. I can remember the day. I, I just, I, I felt like the entire world could see me not able to catch my breath. Yeah, seven and a half billion people were watching you like, man, this guy does, he can't even run. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Truman Show, right? I mean, it's like... And I got to tell you guys, that was that moment that I said, oh my gosh, I, I've become that middle-aged, or I wasn't middle-aged at that point, but I was close, <laughs> who, who, could, who could maybe think he could run the world, but can't even run an eighth of a mile. <laughs> that's, that's a good story. Well, and that's what, that was that motivator, right? That was that thing that said... I've got to, I got to conquer this. So for me, success, though I was a failure at it before, and I'm saying that too for you guys, it's never too late in any of your pursuits, right? Whether it's the exercise, whether it's this, what we're talking about emotional intelligence, today you can start, you can do something. You know, it may not be conquering the world, it may not be the top of the top, but you can do something. So anyway, long diversion back to you guys. <laughs> Let me get back to the screen and we'll keep moving here. Um, so next up, uh, Jeff, I believe we are going to take a look at uh, some of that alignment piece again, just by review. You want to tackle that? Yeah, the alignment is just, is, are these things working the way they should? Is, is what we do, the action driven by the choice that we make? And then is the reason that we're doing it aligned with your personal uh, uh, values and morals or you, you know, your noble goal? So just you know, keep them together. You don't want your action to be coming, you know, I just lost my train of thought. So anyway, it's you, are these things in alignment? Uh, are I you noticed using too, guys, that these all, they work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not unto themselves. So the the, the greater that you, uh, as far as working on those competencies, working on each of these pursuits, they work to help one another to drive and increase your emotional intelligence. Um, as an example, if you have a high con uh, consequential thinking, are you overusing that competency so that you can't take an action? You know, that analysis or paralysis by uh, analysis. You overthink it and you can never come to a decision. So you're going to be out of alignment if you do that. If um, so it, 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 they all work that way. And it's very important, like Eric said, to know that they all are a part of this puzzle of who we are. Yeah. I think we have a couple of, of questions here yeah go ahead or, so you mentioned that a noble goal is something we cannot achieve so your personal missions or goals cannot be a noble goal now, if it's something that you can complete and finish and say i'm done that's really not our definition of a noble goal uh if you're if you want to be 
a multimillionaire, you know, drive a Lamborghini and have a 8,000 square foot house, that's fine to have as a goal to reach, but that's not the same kind of, of goal that we're talking about. Uh, so that's, that's where it takes time. It's, it's, how did you describe it last night? Uh, the thing that breaks your heart. Yes. Um, it's, yeah. I mean, you know, it, to, to where Jeff was going there, you, you're, you, you find this thing, right. That, that you find purpose in, right. Um, that is, is big, right? Um, great example for you uh, is, and I'm just going to pull it out, would be uh, hunger, child hunger. Um, you working on that goal is noble, but I would tell you more than likely, you're not going to be able to solve that one in your lifetime, but it is worth pursuing, is it not? Because if you could get more children to be fed, that's one more child that's not starving, right? And a lot of what we do in emotional intelligence, we know we're not going to get the entire United States to practice emotional intelligence. But if you guys at the university are 60 odd so many people who are on that journey of practicing emotional intelligence, that's 60 more people than before we started this session with you guys on Monday. I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime, but it is worth the pursuit, just as an example. Mm -hmm. Was there another question too, Jeff, or is that, is that it? Just, just some more comments about that. Uh, okay. I think we covered that pretty well. All right. So um, let's look at... Uh, you've got a low battery. Yes, I knew that. <laughs> Everybody knows that now. Um, so... Uh, this particular slide is one that's going to probably leap out to you. And I'll confess, guys, I am not a stat guy. I'm not, I'm not great with graphs and, and digging uh, into numbers. But when you look at this, um, and you can feel free to type in the chat if you like, tell me, tell me what is leaping out to you. And all those little dots are all examples of those that have taken um, our assessments over time. Um, I don't know exactly, this might be as of 2016, uh, but give or take. But what's one thing maybe that you're looking at there? And notice that the key, right? At the top, you have representing effectiveness, relationships, quality of life, and then well being. So feel free to type in the chat. What do you see there? What do you think is. To, what story is being told here? There's definitely a linear, you know, progression. I mean, that's a pretty big cloud of data, but mm -hmm. it seems like, I don't know, the midpoint, it looks like not, between 85 and 90% is like the center of that, that data cloud where it looks like, is that X axis? Is that saying that 90? What is that? What is that number? Is that is that of some kind of an EQ number? Yeah, e that that is, uh, and, and what we would equate to being the norm. If, if you okay, could, you could imagine that. So the the, hun the hundred is the average of all the people that have taken our assessment. Okay, the, for emotional intelligence. So if that helps, and yeah. And, and that is over not just this, I imagine there's probably been three or 400,000 of these assessments done over the years, if not more. So they have tons of information. What else do you guys see? Uh, there's certainly outliers. Mm -hmm. and, and there are. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to accomplish all four years at once. Yes, it takes work. Higher EQ leads to higher effectiveness, uh, building on all principles. Balance is difficult. Yes, it is. Uh, so are, are you, can I just, can you, can you clarify? So the Y axis, are, That's what, the what does that 130 represent according to the four it's, attributes? It's the average, uh, it's this, 
a hundred would be the average again of all the people that took it of these four factors. Okay, so it, on, on the lower left there, when we're looking at when we're looking at um, well-being, are you saying that not very? I mean, no, it's, no a, it's the average of all four of these factors. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, sorry. I was thought. Boy, it looks like we have a lot of people that aren't very well. <laughs> no, so no, yeah, it's it's the average of all four of those factors. Oh, okay, and, and okay. The, the the mean the the hundred is the the middle of it. And one thing I will point out to you guys as well, and, and the main takeaway uh, that we want you to, to to gain from this is that since EQ is learnable, we're trying to really illustrate that the higher you get in your scoring not because you wanna be the winner, but the higher your level of emotional intelligence, the improvement that you will find in these four key success factors. Um, and you guys might even look at it and go, well, duh, Eric, yeah, of course. If I'm uh, more of a consequential thinker, of course I'm gonna be better at problem solving. If I'm better at empathy, yeah, that's gonna improve my, my relationships. This next slide, is really kind of uh, one that um, I, I wanted to bring it out to you um, and and think about, uh, I, we're gonna come out of the slides here in a second, but it's a little activity that um, I put together um, that is rooted around a story. And what I'd like you to do as you're listening to the story, I, I'd like you to evaluate uh, some key areas that we've been discussing around success and those success factors, effectiveness, relationships, quality of life, and well-being. So I'm going to read the stories for you. And then uh, what I'd like you to do is you can feel free to unmute yourself or you can type in the chat. I want you to pick out one of those success factors as it relates to the story that you're about ready to hear. And then I'd like you to offer some commentary in the way of advice, because the story is around Mary, okay? Mary is a successful mid-level manager in, in a pharmaceutical company. Mary has a graduate degree, her MBA. Uh, she's been on a fast track with this pharmaceutical company for the last 10 years. Mary is 38 years old. She's married and she has two children, seven and five. Mary's husband is successful in his own right. He's in sales. But Mary is the primary breadwinner in the home because even though she's in middle management, her career path all in has led to her being the primary breadwinner. Prior to COVID, Mary did a, a lot of traveling. Uh, her basic schedule was in town two days a week, out three. And that was three out of the four weeks of a month. Mary's goals are related to being a good mother, as well as continuing her promotion track, as well as her income. One side goal that related to personal is that she and her husband have a desire for a second home in Florida, as well as preparing for retirement through investing and saving. One of the challenges post COVID has been, she's finding herself not as satisfied in her work because of the lack of connection and seeing clients and working with other teams in other cities. A lot more downtime has led her to wonder whether or not the path that she's chosen is actually the one that is most fitting and fulfilling. She's also found that her desire for exercise and eating well have waned. 
she's beginning to discuss with her manager whether or not there's an opportunity to maybe take a pause in her path to consider if maybe management is not for her. Her husband has also asked her to consider maybe seeing a counselor for some of the issues that she's having. So with that, I'm more than happy to fill in any blanks that maybe I didn't give you in that story. If you need more information. If you don't, you can feel free to type in the chat or unmute yourself. And let's give Mary some advice or maybe maybe some suggestions on what she might want to consider as she's at this crossroads. But first, are there any questions for me? Do you need more information about Mary to help? And Jeff, if you can keep your eye on the chat and if you want to do unmute. that. Can I come in? As you can. <laughs> um, my advice for Mary will be, um, it's life. These things happen. I don't care how productive you want to be. You don't control nature. Sometimes mm -hmm. all of these things coming at her, she still wants to be the best version of herself. I think that it will be a good advice for her to take, take some time off. And sometimes she might need a break. She needs to take some time off. It's not saying that management is not good for her. It's not her calling. She's not playing her role well. But when things go up, sometimes they tend to naturally come back down. And maybe it's that time of her life that things are not coming back down naturally. And she's feeling like, oh, I should be perfect. It's, it's not about perfection. Because so yeah, you, uh, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but would you say this relates then to the success factor of well-being? Yeah, well-being. Because um, Mary wants to be the best version of herself, mm -hmm. and her well-being part of it is very important. She wants to be a manager. She wants to be a mom. But the suggestion her husband had for her to go to therapy—that's a very important resource that she should utilize. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, great, great. Um, uh, so uh, Jeff, if you wanna also, yeah. uh, from the chat, what do you got? Okay, Aaron says, I lived that scenario. Mary needs to focus on what really makes her complete. That goes on, on what she just said. Okay, so um, well-being, quality of life. Yeah. Define what goals are most important for Mary and why they focus on moving and then focus on moving towards that goal. COVID won't last forever, fingers crossed. Uh, things take time and with right help and goals, she can get through it. Uh, and, and with the right help, you don't have to do this alone. That's where that strong uh, interpersonal thing is, you know, you might need to have somebody to kind of be your unofficial coach. Uh, I think Mary might have outworked her current work time. Uh, she might need to, to look at a different uh, role in her life. And that's the assessment, the consequential thinking uh, mm -hmm. that you need to think about. Maybe this is not what I really need to be doing. Think about that. You know, the consequences of what I'm doing is really making me feel bad. So do I need to, to, to make a shift? And that's perfectly fine. Eric and I both made major shifts from what we did for a long time because it was, we felt that it was time and we thought about that. Can I also say to you guys, uh, in fairness to, uh, uh, to myself and just being vulnerable with you, uh, what Jeff said was um, mostly right about me. But if I'm gonna be totally transparent with you, I would tell you I was one of those people that thought I could never lose. I thought my track was the best track and the only track. I got knocked on my back. That's how I discovered, whoa, what am I doing? One of the things that I really wanted you guys to gain from Mary's story is that that could be all of us at one time or another, right? And what happens with career, and it's, 
it's almost insidious in a way. And, and hear me out, I'm not saying it's bad to have a career, but the insidious part is, is that we get in it and then the race starts and it just keeps going and it keeps getting faster and faster. And, and before you know it, one year turns into three, three is five and before, boom, your 10 year anniversary. And you're going, what just happened? If you guys will pause a little bit, if you will slow down a little bit, emotional intelligence can be that friend, that ally that can equip you to go, hey, before I get too far here, let me go and apply some of my consequential thinking, some of my recognized patterns, those kind of things, so that you're not in that place to where you've been running, 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 and then you don't know what you're going to do. And I survived, guys. Here I am. I got a happy ending so far. But what we want to do is to try to help you understand that emotional intelligence can help you as you are becoming a success, as you are achieving, as it is happening. Because that makes for a much better outcome. All right. So I will pause there. Anything else, Jeff, in the chat that you wanted to uh, she seemed happy prior to COVID with traveling and it will go back to normal. A lot of us are dealing with those issues. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife is a therapist, so I understand that help is critical, even we aren't comfortable with it. And that's the thing, when you need help, you're probably not comfortable with asking, but you have to get over that. Mm -hmm. uh, failure is important to have in your life or you will never know when you are succeeding. Uh, it's a fact of life. You're never going to be perfect. And, and if you take a failure or something that didn't go the way you wanted, you can build on that to become successful. You know, you don't want to, the failures you've had in your prior life, uh, one of our other partners, Lynette, is a big one of this, that made you who you are. So you need to value those. Don't think of them as, as worthless. Value those, that time when you're, uh, didn't get done what you wanted to get done. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, that's the pyramid. Uh, you can look that up if you're not familiar with it. Uh, the thing about that Maslow's hierarchy is you can slide up and down it with things changing. You know, she might have been three or four levels up, but now with COVID, she might be down to that bottom one just surviving. So you just have to remember that. Failure is often the best teacher. Okay. All right. So with that, we're going to keep moving. Um, so I'm going to get you out of here on time. And uh, what we're going to look at uh, are some of those competencies. And uh, Jeff, if you want to take the first two there and talk a little bit about them, and then I'm going to bring you guys into seeing the connection to the success factors. I'll take the last two, uh, Jeff. Okay. So... Exercise optimism, like we talked about before, you can see the possibilities uh, of what's going on, but make sure it's realistic. You know, you need to, to, to look at that positively, but with the idea of you're living in a real world. Uh, and you wanted me to take noble goal. So the noble goal is putting your purpose, putting who you are, what you believe in, your moral compass into action. So, so the uh, the next one there, engage intrinsic motivation. Uh, it's really kind of that idea about activating what it is you want that's driving you from inside. Um, there's always going to be some form of extrinsic motivation, but the more that you're able to to call upon intrinsic motivation, um, that leads to greater success. Increase empathy, understanding and connecting with others, and as well as yourself. This idea about uh, you know being able to 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 gain perspective from another's experiences, and again, I will stress to you, you've also got to do that for yourself, and and it's an important factor in when you look at those competencies. So these four competencies, where they're going to play out for you is in. The research that was done around these assessments that we've done over the years, here's 
the connected part. Um, and I would tell you that though we haven't been able to go into a super deep dive, meaning through an assessment for you personally, when you look at these competencies, these are the key ones that really drive success in these four areas. Effectiveness is driven for the most part by optimism. Relationships, this one's kind of straightforward, I think. I mean, empathy and relationships, you could see how that would really help that. Quality of life. Again, one that's fairly straightforward. Engage in intrinsic motivation. The more that you're being driven by what's inside of you, probably your outlook of the quality is going to be a good correlation. And then well-being. Interesting. Increased empathy is showing up twice here. Jeff, do you have any thoughts on that? I believe that the reason it's under well-being is relationship is increasing empathy for the others and your well-being needs, you need to have empathy for yourself. Mm. If you're tired, you need to take a rest. Don't be ashamed of that. Uh, if you're frustrated, that's an emotion. That's telling you that maybe you need to step away for a minute because you're, and that's okay. So it's, it's empathy for yourself and whatever the situation is. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, we're, um, we're getting right toward uh, the end here. And um, for most of all of you, uh, this will be the last night that we'll interact. Uh, obviously, Jeff and I hope that you'll subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel. And uh, uh, we've got some other things, and, and one of which I am going to mention at the end that could be cool to, to kind of help you. Um, but we'd like you to consider these questions um, as you're going forward. Uh, and maybe even if you want to imagine that you never interact with Jeff and I again, what's one lesson or idea from the sessions? I don't have it plural there, but from the two sessions um, that you could implement in the next 30 days. Some idea, some lesson that leaped out to you over the last two nights that you could go, I could run with that. Maybe it was something that one of your uh, classmates or people in the cohort here this last two nights said. Maybe it's something that Jeff said that really resonated with you. Maybe it was something you saw in one of those video clips from Jim Carrey or, or Neil Peart. What's one thing, one small thing that you could do? Because by picking something small, it can lead to the momentum of going into big. That is definitely our philosophy. Small leads to big. One, one small, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, sure, Matt, go ahead. One, one small thing for me is um, something that I struggle with and it's basically spreading myself way too thin. I, I take on way more than I probably should. Um, I, have, I have a large team that spans uh, across the globe and I keep, I just, I, I love, um, I'm actually someone that works well with stress. I like, I like the pressure. I work well under pressure and yeah. I also work really well with ambiguity. So I just, I just take on all the stuff and then I don't realize really how it's affecting my own well being. And mm -hmm. by that is just, I need to, I need to take care of myself. I need to start going on walks just like you, right. Working out. I need to spend more time making myself um, healthy and getting that work-life balance because yeah. it's just, it, it's just, and I think that's probably not an uncommon theme. A lot of people, you know, are always try to see, yeah, yeah I can help. Yeah, I can do it. You, we want to help and we want to do more, but boy, you really got to be careful because it can really zap your, your energy and your health. Yeah. And Quadrant Matt, I, can, two. I can tell you, um, and, and, you know, I joke with folks and I tell them, hey, if what I'm about to say has no value to you, there's always a trash can nearby. Um, so it, here's, here's that thing, right? That one small thing. Could it be a 10 minute walk every other day? Just Holy. start there, right? Could it be, yeah. could it be that I'm going to go and I'm going to walk every other day for 10 minutes, but I'm also going to go to the gym once a week for 20 minutes? 
Just going to try that because we really are talking about, and Jeff and I mentioned it, I think mostly last night about these neural pathways. We're just creating a new neural pathway. And the best way those are built are the small implements over time. And, and I know you get that in the role that you're in. It's not yeah. like you take the project and you finish it the next day. Um, but thanks yeah. for sharing that, Matt. That's great. Um, yeah, I got I to gotta re-script myself. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. How about anyone else? Uh, what's, what's one lesson or idea maybe from the session? And even if you don't volunteer tonight to, to, to share, uh, take it with you. And, and maybe write it down in your own little notebook or something that you're going you're gonna to try. But if anybody else wants to share, please. One of the things that I always tell somebody that I'm debriefing is we go over it. We go over all these things. And I ask them to, to sit with it for 24 to 48 hours before they make any action plan mm. to, to let it kind of ruminate so that they're caught, you know, whatever words you want to use. So think about that, you know, you'll be getting the recording again uh, if you want to go over it. So sit with what we talked about and then go back over it again. And you'll usually find some insights that you didn't have before. Yeah, your style might be that. And that's a great suggestion uh, to give it some time. Um, and, and again, if you're, if you're in that category of I want to get to it, uh, again, we just recommend start small. Um, do any others in the chat, Jeff, that you might be able to see? Let's see. Uh, take more time to react to emotions. We have several people uh, mention the six seconds. That's taking more time. Uh, be cognizant. I plan on working on well-being. Uh, I take on too much work. And this is interesting. So many people are struggling with COVID and the pandemic and everything that Things are being highlighted now that have been content to let slide for years. It's bringing well, things to the and forefront. I think, too, I think too, it just it, this whole year has just amplified that. I mean, I haven't, I haven't been in my office since uh, February eighth. <laughs> so, and none of, none of the people that I work with, were, they're all engineers, developers. They're all working from home, so we don't have that interaction to get that fulfillment of, yeah. you know, FaceTime and camaraderie. We have, we have Zoom and Microsoft Teams, but it's just not the same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is a, a good segue too to that last question, right? And, and sometimes, you know, this, and obviously we've been focusing on, our, on ourselves, but I think about uh, those of you, whether you're like Matt and you've got a, a, a very dispersed team in many different areas or whether you're, Maybe you're in the same city or maybe it's in a class and, a, and you're in a cohort or, or whatever it may be around your education. Who could you help? And, and I don't mean help like, hey, I want to tell you how to live your life. I mean help like, you know what? You know, I was in this session the other night and they talked about uh, increasing empathy for yourself. And you know what I've started doing? I fill in the blank. You never know, guys just what one small little thing like that could be big. Because one of our great concerns with this COVID thing and 2020 in general, is that how it's impacting people from an isolation perspective. And if all of us can just maybe one thing, one comment, one, one conversation, short, brief, non-judgmental, it could have an immeasurable, but as to Jeff's point as well, maybe you need to think about who could that be? Who's that person I could help based on what I've learned in these two sessions about emotional intelligence? So with that, I'm going to take you here. Uh, this is being recorded, so you'll have it. These are just some links to some of the things that we have that are free to you that you can, you can gain information about emotional intelligence and what we do. Uh, there's another thing, it's not on here. We do have something called EQ Wednesdays. It happens at noon Eastern time. It's every Wednesday. And it's a very informal, it's Zoom driven, uh, where we talk about different things around emotional intelligence. 
we try to be uh, one of those things where you can learn about emotional intelligence without it having some of the weight of a, you know, a scripted, we're going to go through one, two, and three. Um, that information is also can be found um, in our, uh, our social media channels as well. Or if you want to know, hey, Eric, I, I, I didn't see it on your podcast page. Can you send me a link? info at spirit of eq just tell me that you want to know about that but that's something that's free as well that we do um and then uh there is going to be a, a quiz here because there's a certificate jeff you want to kind of talk a little bit about that and yeah we'll it's close it out it's uh just a multiple choice and i i i'm not sure professor you'll handle getting it to them yeah good afternoon everyone uh or Yes, absolutely. We uh, have it on the D2L guys. So what you need to do is uh, take the quiz and you have to score 70% uh, uh, at least to get certification from Jeff and Eric uh, as a participant of EQ. So again, if you want to become a certified in EQ, uh, you need to take the quiz and achieve a 70% or more. And it is available on D12 now. You can okay. take it any time between now and the end of uh, next week uh, by Monday midnight. And then yeah. we, you will be sent a certificate with your uh, name. Yes, please. Jeff, if you could, uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, if you could send me the certificates and I'll, I'll hand it to the students. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, one thing I would mention too, guys. I, you, you may wonder, okay, well, what's the power around getting this certificate? What does that really matter? I mean, you know, let me tell you guys, I, I mentioned it really briefly the other, uh, last night. You talk to your organization or, or when you're out interviewing and, and, and let them know that you were in a two session course around emotional intelligence, um, you, you will see them perk up, especially in the time we're in right now because organizations need emotionally intelligent people because things are changing so rapidly. And it is, I mean, we're all got this coming and going thing. So there is a tremendous amount of value in the certificate and what you do with it. So, um, and, and I get it, uh, you guys probably know this. I'm not, uh, I'm not telling you something that you've not heard before or, or, or are aware of, so. Um, with that, uh, it's been our pleasure to be with you these last two nights. Uh, it's kind of flown by, at least feels that way to me, Jeff. Uh, uh -huh. um, but, but that's probably because we love doing this work and, and you guys have been great, interactive. And um, you know, once again, if you got questions, info at Spirit of EQ, uh, you, you saw those resources. Uh, I should have this out on our YouTube channel and I'll get the links to you, Professor so that you can distribute those for people to review if they want to go back through the recordings. But other than that, um, I wish you well and great and, success ahead. Uh, and I, I've tried this. If you don't want to have to type in, think, if you just type in Spirit of EQ podcast and Google, you'll find it. And the same thing way on YouTube, uh, you'll find it too, if you don't want to. <laughs> because I never can type those in without messing them up. So. Yeah, and that's the thing. Wherever it is that you're getting your podcast, you'll be able to find us. It, it, it'll be easy for you. Jeff thank and you, Eric, guys. I, and, and on behalf of the class, I'd like to thank you so much. These are valuable sessions, and uh, I always enjoy listening to you guys. Absolutely. The stories, the examples, the, the minions. So... <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, all, thanks, for, all... thanks for sharing your story about the the eighth mile too. That gives me some inspiration to go get my tennis shoes on. <laughs> all right, Matt. All right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, all of you guys have a great evening, great holiday season. Please take care of yourself. And again, reach out to us if there's anything we can do going forward. Can thanks. I give you a quick call, Eric? Yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. Thanks, thanks everybody. Care, Appreciate all right. it. Much. Nice meeting you. All right.